Hey, it's Tim. Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. You're by the five foot one in the world. Jules Zimino! From oh. Chicago, who's back from Spain, who's back from Rebel, who's back from California, who's back from Indiana, who's back from, I think that's actually very tired. That's that's the end of that story. I'm very I, tired. I think that's your house behind you. Is that, are you actually home? I am actually at home. This is my office. This is my space. This is not a backdrop. This is, this is my office. I'm home. Yeah, I thought maybe at this point you're just doing a backdrop because you're not there. So, uh, yeah, and I'm actually home as well. So um, I'm excited because next week we will be at the LA Auto Show. And uh, that is my last trip on my agenda for the year as far Me as business trips. Too. Meet Me you too. too. I know. And people understand, like, I'm pretty damn excited about this. Like, I'm like, sweet. <laughs> and you know something's going to come up at the last minute. I know. It's going to be one of those things and it's going to be a must fly somewhere. And it's like, God. Okay, so uh, you're a little tired. I'm way tired. I had a long day driving Cheyenne back. I drove a Chevy Colorado back. Um, there'll be more details on that. There's your teaser. Um, anyways, so we should probably just get to the meat of the matter. Uh, we had a long night Monday night. I saw some emails back and forth because oh, the Ram. Today. <laughs> right? Because the 2025 Ram 1500 unveiled. And I was doing a video, and you're working with Will Bird, who wrote the story for us, and you were editing, and you were all trying to understand. We were all like, you know, you have to understand the emails were flowing like even till like six or seven o'clock at night trying to get everything lined up because it was big news. But we're trying to understand the big news like you're trying to to break it all down. Like, what do they really do? And so the synopsis I have and I, I don't know if you share this with me is that we have Hemi V8 dead. Yes. Gone, right. We have a, the twin turbo inline six hurricanes going to replace both those. We have the new Ram Charger, which is a. Uh, you're going to help me out this a little bit. We're going to talk a little more about this minute. But we have new Ram Charger and we have new tungsten <laughs> trim, which is the new high, high trim yes. um, of trucks. And we do have level two autonomous driving, hands-free, which I'm pretty sure is going to be on certain trims working way down. But um, so th basically, that's big news. We have V8's gone, twin turbo inline six engines, two different variations. The Ram Charger, which is based, which is a electric vehicle with an engine with ports to plug into, which I've heard many different stories in this, and then we have yeah. new tungsten trim. So let's go back to the Ram Charger on this because- Yeah, and you, I need to I, dig into this more um, because we probably oversimplified it in the article, but like, I just feel like there was so much information. Um, essentially, if you guys remember the Chevrolet Volt with a V, right? the original one, not the second one, so the first generation vehicle, um, it's not a plug-in hybrid. And it's not a hybrid, and it's um, it, because the engine doesn't provide any motiv motivation to the wheels. And I remember having this argument, what, 15 years ago with people um, and, and General Motors and, you know, and, and all of this. And people are still going to call the Ram Charger a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. But what it is, is it's an electric vehicle with a range-extending engine. So the engine will never power the wheels right the it, engine it, charges the battery the battery then sends power to the motor which then powers the wheels and the confusing part of this is two things first of all there's there's plugins <laughs> on the driver's side door for 110 220 and for the dc fast charging yes so you could pull over and charge the battery although the design of it and Tim Kaniska's uh, comment was you never have to use public charging ever. Like, well, you don't have to, but you could. You but could. then with the plugins on the front, that's going to fuel the argument. That it's a plug in hybrid. That's good. I could see, I, I know the arguments it's coming from that. Vehicle. Because, I know. It's an electric vehicle that has a range extending engine. So the difference between a plug in hybrid and then an electric vehicle. In a plug-in hybrid, the gasoline engine can provide mot motivation to the wheels. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, I, I mean, semantics. And, and I've heard people calling it a series hybrid. Um, right. I'll be honest. Like, I, I would have to dig into the nuances of that language. Yeah, because there's a, there's a parallel hybrid. There's a series hybrid. And I, and I don't – my attitude to those comments is, Nobody cares. No, it's, <laughs> right? it's an electric vehicle. It's, it's a nerdy thing to worry about. Extended range. Yeah. It's, it's so, 
and, and I said in the video, I, I called it basically it's a rolling generator. So if you know what a generator does, a generator, the engine goes and the engine provides power to the battery unit and the battery unit sends the power. So it's basically a, a rolling generator. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, I, I want to know price point. Um, I'm really con questioning that they said the payload was going to be really high. And in my experience with the Jeep 4xe's and the the Jeep plug-in hybrids, is that payload takes a big hit. So I'll be curious to see how they get how they got how they get around that because not only are you adding a heavy battery, you're not taking out the heavy engine. You're having both, right? So yeah. it, again, the Pentastars weighs less than the Femi 5.7 V8. It just does. And so I mean, it, you're, you're not like you're doing a Hemi with that. But it's it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. I mean, I know that the uh, e-torque system was basically passed on passed by most consumers they just they did there was no bang for the buck there people didn't really care about this but this thing could have the potential to have a lot of, a lot of care for the buck so well and so what i really like about this vehicle is you know i mean and, and jeep and ram love to use the no compromises like tag right. but 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 i feel like this is this is honestly like no compromises for your city driving you can go in EV mode all the time. You can drive like an electric vehicle. But if you need to tow, if you need to drive long distance, like Chicago to Indianapolis in the winter, <laughs> and you don't want to spend an hour sitting in 16 degree weather charging your vehicle, um, you can use the range extended option. And, and with the, like, I want to say with the extended range battery, because I saw a couple of different range numbers, but the max range you can get is 500 miles of range. No, it's 690. Is it 690? I thought yeah, it was 690. Yeah, 690. That they're they're touting total range is 690. So basically, okay. the the engine provides so 500 for the battery and then extending to 690. Yeah, I, th I think it's actually 500 for the gas with the tank, 190 or 290 for the battery. But yet, yeah, combination. I've, I've seen yeah. 690. Okay. But, but so I just, I think that that, that is, I think, why haven't we done this sooner? Yeah. And I think there's going to be, I mean, I can't wait to do the press drive on this because I can't wait to talk to engineers to get their idea because Elliot nails it. Elliot says, this isn't going to be hard to explain to shoppers at all. <laughs> no. Face, face palm. no. <laughs> this is going to be a tough sale mm -hmm. and I can see it happening. And yeah, the weight's going to be an issue. So as uh, Jerk Soldier 9 says, uh, our roads can't handle heavier and heavier trucks are already in disrepair. That's a good point too. And then um, Al brings up, he says, you know, he goes, I think the payload will be high because the majority of the frame suspension will be designed to handle a BEV battery twice the size of this RAM charger. That's a good point because the uh, platform on this is the STLA large platform. Mm -hmm. And they've widened the, pushed the frame rails out a little bit more to handle the, the, the size of the battery in there. And so I'll be interested to see if that, if that chassis can handle more payload because of the way it's built. And that's going to be a really interesting one. So, I mean, honestly, I I was thinking about uh, buying a Ram next year because I knew the new one was coming out. I was like, oh, I'm going to buy the Hurricane. It's be really cool. And then this came out, and I was like, huh, wait a minute here. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, crap. What do I do now? Because I'm like, this now is you buy two trucks. I know this is rather Man interesting. Versus Ram Charger. Well, right, because it, it got me interested. But um, our friend Chad over at EV Pulse pointed out today. I don't know if you saw this, but the, in the ram charger there are two wireless charging hookups for phones yes i did see them. that <laughs> and so they're both they're called ram chargers so you can have in your ram charger be charging your ram charger with both different ram chargers in your ram charger <laughs> it's like it's like wait what? what what's going on so yeah it's like what just happened here yeah uh last star foster says i think it seems like the ram charger idea would be awesome at 2500 what three quarter 350 with a four-cylinder diesel you know, I think it's going to come down to consumer demand. Like what is most of the stuff happens, right? So if, if they start selling out of these quickly, I mean, they could see that I could say it's spreading because you already have the engineering done. You just would take with a three quarter ton and one ton, you would take the same engineering and basically beef it up and make it stronger and you'd have a bigger truck. But I don't know. It's, 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 I, I was thinking that, um, uh, Gene points out the Ram Charger is apartment approved, no plugs needed. Because you don't. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing that makes like the Rav Four Prime so good for everybody is that you get the great fuel economy. You never, you never have to plug it in. I think that's that's the big key with this. And you look at like uh, somebody else pointed out. You know, they don't have to use much battery uh, lithium as GM does with their big 
Hummer SUV and they get this kind of similar ideas. I mean, I don't know. But, but here's the problem with no plug needed. You're not going to get the benefit if you never plug it in. You're not going to get the electric range, which is kind of the point. So like, why would you buy this vehicle if you're not going to plug it in? Like to me, so I, I, I I noticed my my friend um, Dan from Chicago, who's one of my running friends, was on at the beginning, Dan Ashley in Chicago, and he has um, a Tucson plug-in hybrid, and I'm still puzzled. I'm still puzzled by that purchase. I love you, Dan. Very puzzled because he doesn't have a garage, and so he, he doesn't have a place to plug it in. And in my mind, having a plug-in hybrid without plugging it in doesn't make sense. So Maybe. having an electric vehicle with a range extending gasoline engine that you're never going to plug in doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Right. And we talked to Ed Kim about this over at Auto Pacific. Um, Pacifica. I always forget that. Is it A or not? Uh, no way. Okay. Um, no, no way. No super. No way, no way uh, for you. Um, and he was saying that they've done studies on in California and nobody plugs them in. The reason why people are buying them was because they got HOV lane access. Yeah. Um, and, and honestly, in California, I've driven in California. I would... <laughs> that heartbeat. I don't think they're allowed to do that anymore. Did they change the law? I think, I think they might have changed the law. I don't know if anybody from California is on. Please feel free to jump in the comments. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't think they do that anymore. And um, but but yeah, I I just I don't know. I just the extra cost that you get from having a plug-in hybrid or an electric vehicle or you know the extra cost to me, like if you're not going to actually use it for the intended purpose and you're not going to uh get the um the the electric range and you're 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 not going to pay for gas like that that doesn't make sense to me it doesn't make sense right so and mark molina brings this up so how much are trucks going to increase in price yeah so let me pick your brain on this a little bit it seems like in my top off top of my head number is i thought that most plug-in hybrids hybrids you know, whatever um i thought most of them were about 10 grand more. And in certain companies, they only allowed the higher trim levels to do plug-in hybrids when they first started off. So you know, so let's say let's say this is true. Let's say they're only gonna do the higher trim levels and that's not gonna roll it out to start with, which is what they do a lot of times because sometimes they can they can absorb from the cost of the powertrain by doing the higher trim level because they have more profit in the higher trim level vehicles. And so but I did see, I, I take it back a little bit. I did see a, um, and I may actually publish these photos. I, I'm curious about this. I saw a tradesman version of the Ram Charger. Mm. There are actually photos of it. I don't know if we did the whole gallery. I, I honestly. We, we did not. Um, yeah. I, I only, like, I didn't have the photos. So I just, you know. Uh, I, right. Yeah. We were we kind of caught up. I I was out of town. She's out of town. I mean, it's just train wreck and stuff getting stuff done. But that they, they had a tradesman version of it. So that actually excites me because the tradesman version of that, and they have if again 10 pages of press release. I believe the Ram Charger has a 7.2 kilowatt hookup in the rear. And so you can actually power a job site with your mobile generator, basically, is what the, the truck is. And you have the similar uh abilities that the Ram or the Ford power boost has and delivering that power output. And so I like that idea. And if you do a tradesman version of it, that means on job sites, you don't have to worry about where they put the power in. You don't have to worry about cords and charging batteries. You can just drive your truck anywhere on the job site. Now I know most job sites, they have a spot where they have the plugs, they plug stuff in, they have a truck to do it. I mean, I get it, but it kind of, it just adds more stuff. And especially the thing too is on farms. Like we're constantly seeing guys who have generators both on the back of their trucks because they're out fixing fence or out doing something you need power at that place and they have a five thousand acre farm and there's just a ranch or farm they have no way to get power out there so I, I like that idea because as you know as a guy who works outside quite a bit um having the mobile power anywhere is really damn convenient and so i it's gonna be interesting to see what happens to that i again i think the price point if i were to guess the price point would be at least 10 grand more than the base level truck with the low output hurricane engine. And I think that there's going to be a slow roll on these as they get production going, because the other thing too, that uh, our friend Paul Strauss pointed out from the Osmer is that you also have, unlike a, a BEV, a full battery electric vehicle, you do have more parts now in this Ram charger. You have a engine, plus you have a, a battery setup with computers and 
and wiring. So you have a little more complexity. So from a production standpoint and manufacturing standpoint, I could see where this could take a little more time to build this truck and take a little more time to get some efficiencies of scale, to get production going well, to get things up and going without many hiccups, because it's just, it's going to be more complex to build. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely will. I just, I, I don't know. I'm very, I'm very intrigued. I, I will be honest, I've been distracted today um, dealing with some other things and um, part of which was um, consolidating all my Rebel stuff and unpacking and repacking. It's been like, what, two weeks since I got yeah, back and yeah. I still had a pile on my floor. Um, but uh, yeah, so I need to, I need to go and I need to read this stupid 10 page press release and look at what other people have said because neither of us attended the briefing. So we didn't get to ask questions about right. the people. And one of the questions I would have is, can the battery ever be a hundred percent depleted? And I, don't so know, I mean, there's, there's a lot to ask. Engine. Yeah. I think there's a lot to ask. I'm not sure that, uh, I, I honestly, I'm not really sure engineering's ready for all our questions either because I think they're they're still You're doing. Still trying to figure it out. Still, yeah, I think everybody's trying to figure this out because it's it's unique to me. I, I don't care about. Um, let me say this more clearly. When I had the Ford F50 Power Boost, I didn't care about the hybrid portion of it because regular gas vehicles were cheaper and they got the same fuel economy. It wasn't a benefit there. I like the power on board, and so now if the Ram can take the same idea of having the power on board, more functionality in the truck but then give you actually some true benefits in fuel economy. That's a really interesting proposition. Uh, the, the power boost was a cool idea and it's still a cool idea. I like the truck a lot, but there's really no benefit in fuel economy. Um, and so I'll be curious what's going in there. Uh, Dave and Kenneth says, he notices that the rims are eight lugs. I, there used to be a thing back in the day where eight lugs were heavy duty and six lugs were a uh, half ton. And I think that that has kind of gone out the window. I think a lot of, of brands are now moving to eight lugs, more simplicity, and as far as wheels, they can build. And a lot, I don't know, I think the eight lugs look better, all those things. Uh, Mark Molina, more computers, more things that can break. Yep, yep, argument there. You know, if you want something that's going to last and not break, well, it's not the junkyard. It's a 1980 square body with a V8 in it. <laughs> but it, the thing, actually, I, I make that joke. I make the joke all the time. Just, I'm just picking on you, Mark. I, I will tell you this, that um, people talk about how new vehicles are, are more computers, more things can break. It's funny how much we forget how the 1980s and 90s trucks were less complex, less computers, but we were always working on them. <laughs> people, you you know, people look at me like, them. yeah, you they're like, now you can't work on. Now you, you can't work on them, but now, now they don't. They don't break down as often as you used to. Like my '62, people are like, aren't you glad you can just hop in the engine bay and work on it? Uh, yeah. But I always need to hop in the engine bay to work, work on it. It's always something funky going on with that that truck. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, what's happening with that? Um, let's see. So more fancy dancing around a political narrative that can't function in the real world. EVs still depend on dead dinosaurs. I don't know. Depends where you live. Depends what you're looking at, Jules. If you look at the uh, National Energy, uh, there's a there's a website that the Energy Laboratory puts out. It's uh, energy.gov. And depending on the state, so like here in Nebraska and Wyoming, uh, we use a lot of coal. And it is still dependent on coal. But in California, they use no coal. It's all wind, power, and solar, and uh, uh, water. Uh, so it just depends where you, where you live. It's just going to be it's going to be one of those things. Um, uh, I see. So well, let's know, see. Somebody made the comment. Um, I'm like trying to find it where they were talking about. Oh, here you go, Kevin. Um, it's going to end up like the silver auto hybrid in the last three years because it doesn't sell. So by the way, I don't know if any of you guys drove the silver auto hybrid, but that wasn't really a hybrid. It was mm -hmm. what they essentially call the auto stop start. That was the genesis of the silver auto hybrid and, yeah. and, and the, the auto stop start crappiness that it currently exists in vehicles. Um, it was a mild hybrid. The engine would shut off when you start. I don't think there was any motivation to the wheels in electric mode. It was crappy. It didn't sell because it was crappy. So it was, expensive. I mean, it was expensive. You didn't get better fuel economy. It was more complex. No. So, yeah. so I mean, the 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 challenge that Ram is going to have is not making this a crappy system. They're going to have to make it something that is viable and works well. 
And um, like, I, I don't know. I just, I really think this has potential because right now the truck world is not ready for a full electric vehicle. You know, we've mm-hmm. posted stories about Rivian vehicles towing like a Ford Mustang from California to Michigan, and they had to stop every hour to charge. That is not practical. That is not mm-hmm. practical. And the charging infrastructure is not set up right now for trucks that tow things. Because most of them are not pull throughs. They're, you know, you drive up to it. And depending on where your charge port is, you have to detach your trailer before you can charge. It's not set up for, uh, you know, vehicles that tow. So, uh, you know, something like this makes a lot of sense to me where you can get all of the benefits of an electric vehicle when you want the benefits of an electric vehicle. And then all of the benefits of a gasoline powered vehicle when you need to actually use your truck for truck things. This this is my argument with putting an E, like, so I'm on the North American Car and Truck of the Year jury. Um, and my argument with putting like an electric truck in the truck category is electric trucks can't do truck things well. Like, sure, the, the Ford F-150 Lightning can tow 10,000 pounds or 9,000 pounds, whatever it is, for 30 minutes, but that's not going to make a lot of sense when when you're you're going long distance over the country, it doesn't do truck things for an extended period of time. So I, I mean, this this is going to be the challenge that um, you know the 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 Ram Charger is going to have is they're going to have to implement this in a way that it does it well, and and I think it's a great solution for somebody who wants to tow in to the EV thing, but you know doesn't want to depend on a crappy infrastructure. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And that's, you and I talked about this many times offline and online. That's been my argument with Nactoy for years. Um, I know EVs tend to win because people like journalists love the the fancy, the give me bells and whistles, show me the bright lights, look at the cool thing. But when it comes down to actual usage for customers, I don't think they match up. Well, um, yeah. And I mean, I, and it's funny because I've, I've had conversations with like I was the only juror last year and I've never publicly said this, but I'm saying it now. So oops. Um, I was the only juror last year that did not vote for the F-150 Lightning. I was the only one. And, and <laughs> I, sorry, sorry Ford, but I, that was me. Um, and, and it was because it's in the truck category. If you put it in the utility category, I would have given it points. Yeah. But- it's, it's, a, it, you know, the Lightning on its, on its, at its core, is a good vehicle. It drives well. It has lots of storage. It's comfortable to ride in. It's mm-hmm. got lots of cool technology. It's got you know fuel. It prices are stupid cheap because it's running on EV. But as a truck, it's not very good. As utility, it's great. It just depends it how you use it. Things. If you use your truck as a extent, just a round town daily driver. Lightning could fit your needs. It could be easy. Um, simple. For I love the one fifty Lightning. Let's be clear yeah. here. Yeah. I think it's an amazing vehicle, I, but it's not an amazing truck. Right. So if you're asking either. me to vote on it in the truck category, no. Yeah, and um, I think it's interesting. Um, I want to see. So, all right, David Cannon wants to know this because I've been arguing about this a little bit online. How are Jeep four by e sales? Actually, Jeep is claiming that they have the best selling plug-in hybrid on the market, and they do by the numbers. But the, the overall market is really small. It's only like 300,000 units sold last year. The Jeep sold majority of that as far as a good majority to lead the group. But um, it's still a small market still because, again, like our friend said, Elliot, earlier, this is really hard to explain to consumers. It's hard to get people to understand it and to do the value proposition. It's really tough to say to somebody, okay, I'm going to give you a vehicle with this kind of capability, this kind of stuff. If you use it this way, you get all these benefits. And then you get people like your friend in Chicago who buys it and doesn't use it for those benefits. And so now you have this weird place. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Well, how I will that say, is. Dan did chime in in the comments and he said that um, his wife um, charges while she's shopping. Okay. Yeah. You can yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, I want to break away for one hot second. Cause I just thought about this. If you've been watching the uh, Friday truck news kind of recap stuff, we had our first winner, uh, Jonathan, I've been emailing him back and forth and I'm going to sit in the out tomorrow. He actually decided he wanted this hat. Which kind of breaks my heart. It's one of my favorite hats that Toyota has given us. It is oh, the trail hat. yeah. And I know. I really like this hat. You so like if you're not hat. listening to the pot, the Friday truck news recaps, you're not part of the raffle press I'm giving out, the raffle we're doing. 
and you're not getting these hats. So I have, I have stuff, and I haven't even asked Jill for any of her stuff. I'm and not so, giving away any of my stuff. Sorry. Well, cool. actually, I do have some hats I can give you, but yeah. Right, I'd like so to use her. We have stuff. You need to listen to that truck news on Friday. There's a keyword in that that will show you how to get the wrap. Paperweight. Nobody on this channel cares about it, but I'm keeping this. Right. I mean, there's a variety of stuff we get, but like how many yeah. times, Jill, do we go to events and there's like a four or five hats sitting there and there's things and we don't even grab them. But now I'm thinking I'm going to grab them and build up my supply of things that I want to I want to I want to send you free stuff. All you have to do is watch the video and look for the keyword and put that in. And there's a raffle button on pickuptrucktalk.com. Click the button. I looked at last week. We had 40 people that had entries. This week, we're like at 23. You guys, you got, you got free stuff. And then uh, this winter, right around Christmas time, Jill and I will probably do a special live stream. And we'll do some more stuff on this. I have, uh, I'm going to give away some Marimoto uh, LED lights. I got like 300 bucks a piece. I, the, I think it's 300 bucks a pair, maybe. I have um, some bubble rope recovery rope that would be great for even jill and rebel we have lots of cool stuff giving away so uh keep in mind for that so yeah and by the way uh the books are not part of the equation so no you no can't. no books no it's basically my own definitely not giving up my harlequin romances those stay with me um I... and I'm, something else i'm not giving away because i think this is really cool and this is the only press kit i have really ever kept what is that um this is from jeep this was a press kit and it's like for the wrangler i think we got it in 2019 i'm like trying to this is just so cool and it has like i mean it's it's fraying now because it's getting old but it has like this leather strap and you like open it up um i'm like maybe you open up oh it's got like this snap mm -hmm. on the thing and then um you can slide the case off and then it has, um, yeah, so it's the 2018 Wrangler. Um, but then it has, like, this really cool book in it. And then, um, sorry, I'm, like, totally hijacking this. No, I think it's giving it away, and I'm hijacking it. Uh, but this was the um, the the USB drive. Um, and it looks like it's a little speaker. I never even plugged it in. And it looks like it's, like, a little speaker, and it'll maybe, like, speak to you. And then, I I mean, that, yeah, that might be even like a little Bluetooth speaker because it gives you like the, I, I just, I just thought this was so cool. So I've never even like really, uh, oh no, this, this is the USB drive. And then this is, is like a little Bluetooth speaker that you can like hang from something. I don't know. I like, they used to give away the coolest press kits ever um they they don't they don't like it they're saving conserving space and stuff now but i think this is just so cool yeah i mean we got uh, this one i can't wait to give away actually i i, I don't want to i want to keep it but i don't want to keep it this is the zr2 performance thing oh. this is the proving grounds that chevrolet tested the zr2 on see these lines on this this is the proving ground labs oh, see that's cool yeah it's a little tire and little it's a little piece of uh it's a little um, cactus with a tire. So, yeah, there's lots, lots of cool stuff. So you guys gotta listen. That's my, that's my pitch to you guys to watch the truck news recap and to do the key, the, uh, the word I put in there because it's cool stuff. It really is cool stuff. Um, Booptube wants to know. He says, "Think of some videos you guys working on. You working on your old truck? I do have a video coming soon. I bought a new um, speedometer, which I could just show you. What the hell? I'm gonna grab it. Um, we're we're doing show and tell tonight. We're doing show and tell. Um, and, and Todd apparently wants my um, cookbooks. I'm not giving those away either. Uh, those are all like over. I'm like here. These two shelves are my cookbooks. You can't have those. This is my new speedometer for Swede. So my speedometer makes a bunch of noise because the speedometer cable we replaced twice. Two transmissions, but it's a damn speedometer. It's actually stuck at 20. And you get it and... <laughs> So this is cool. I got this from Holly. I, I had to buy it, so I buy it from Influencer Program. But uh, this is it's an analog style ga gauges. But what's cool with this is it connects to my EFI fuel system in that truck, and it's GPS coordinated. So there is no cable running transmissions. Typically, there's a cable that runs transmission. As transmission goes, this cable spins, and, and it coordinates into how fast you're going. This is GPS, which I just think is pretty badass. I could be GPS coordinated with that. 
So there yes, you go. Yes, is that a GPS pedometer? It's very nice. Yes. So I, I'm tomorrow. I'm taking Sweet into the shop to get um, everything tightened up to bolts. I had a shock mount kind of fall off on me while I was driving around, so I got to put weld that back in. And then I'm putting this in, and then I have a, a brake booster coming uh, around Thanksgiving. And then my hope is the weather's been pretty good lately. I'm hoping, knock on wood, it stays it good because I really want to do like a hundred mile fuel economy test with with Swede because um, everybody says to me, "Well, your truck should get this, truck should get that, truck should get this." I decided that that all these older truck guys have no idea. <laughs> they have no idea what they can get. So I'm gonna be curious. You know, can my can my '62 C10 get similar fuel economy to a 2023 model or 2024 model? I want to say no. I want to say no. <laughs> but I don't. But I don't know. I've had people tell me anywhere from 20. I've had people tell me 16. I've had people tell me 22. I've had. I mean, it's been crazy across the board because. Sweet does not weigh that much, and it, it, there's a overdrive transmission in that, so he idles pretty low. Apparently, I haven't done it yet because I've been a little nervous about it. But apparently, at 65 miles an hour, it idles like a 1500 RPMs, and he weighs about half as much as a, as a half ton truck does. So I'm just gonna be curious to see what happens with that, as what the, what's going on uh, for that. So I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. Uh, Andrew says people Ford still offers a V8. Still want to say that because people are really not mentioning it. Yes, Ecobus is popular, but they still mention that Ford still has V8. I actually brought that up in my video, uh, Andrew. I actually did talk about that. Um, I will say that Ford is one of those brands that talk so much about EcoBoost. They never give us. Uh, I've never. I don't think I've ever had a Ford V8 as a press loan. I don't think I've ever had. It. It's always been EcoBoost, and um, I find it interesting that GM. Have you driven the because the Raptor has a V8. 6.2 liter supercharged V8, the Raptor R. Yeah. Yeah. When I got into business, I knew the Raptors existed, but I didn't get a chance to drive until I drove the new Raptor. I think I maybe drove it once, but I no, I, I guess I want to say a standard F-150 with the V8, a, a regular okay. one, but yeah. No, I haven't. I, I I think I've driven a Raptor once or twice to the V8, but it was really, really rare because uh, by the time I got into business, started doing stuff and getting forward liking me and wanting to do stuff with me. Um, they were kind of on the downside of doing Raptor stuff with the, with the V8. That's the thing. It's like this business all relationships. It takes you like a decade to get to the point where you can make relationships happen. So um, that that's going to be interesting. I, and GM had announced they were going to do some investments in next generation V8 as well. And I'll be curious. I, I know GM's watching this really close. <laughs> so I'll be curious to see if they're going to even follow through with that or just do the 2.7 liter and do something different with that. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to that. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, somebody said, Mark Miller says, I'll take an ICE vehicle for at least another 10 years. ICE vehicles aren't going away. They're just, they're not going away. It's not going to happen. The ICE vehicles are going to be around for a long period of time. Gas is not going away. Diesel is not going away. Especially in trucks, they're not going away. They're it's not going just, away. It, it, it doesn't make sense. It's going like, to be, I mean, we, we have to get a generation of people to want to make the switch, change people's just, entire transportation habits it, it's just not gonna happen it's just well, it's gonna be a long period of time the entire infrastructure has to be redone and like there, there's just so many things and that and, have and to yeah, be, yeah you know and done. private charging infrastructure and public in, i mean so you have it's so much going on yeah it's yeah on. um todd is on tonight he wants to know when the golf fighting is as you have a hundred thousand subscribers so again thank you very much on those subscribers and everybody um i did run in the treadmill the last couple of days uh, just because i've been not, I don't know. I've just gone through. So, you know, I have the health issues and I changed my medication and, and I'm just <laughs> still working through it. It's a process. And so I did run the day. So uh, my running is going fine. We're looking at probably the spring, Todd, to be honest with you, uh, between what I have going on, what Jill's got going on. It just, we just don't have, it just, uh, it's not going to happen. I we just too much stuff going on. At, at well, the, and it's cold. It, yeah. Unless, unless it's we cold outside. Unless we flew someplace and we had extra time and something were to happen, it just doesn't make sense. And, you know, yes, we're going to California next week, but I'm deer hunting that week. So I'm going to hopefully get my deer bag before I go and or I'm going to come back and get it done. So I can't really spend more time in California. And then, you know, I have some family stuff going on. So I don't want to take extra trips at the moment. And Jill's got her family stuff going on. So just we're, we're working on it. We're, we're, act, we're talking about it. We're working on it. It's in the cards. We just it's, it's a tough one at the moment. So uh, let's go. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh... <laughs> I love Dave in Canada. 
none of these vehicles really matter because only old dudes sitting in rocking chairs who can afford them. You know, I, I want to agree with you, but I don't agree with you. I mean, I'm telling you, I go on some different Facebook groups and you will find people younger than me who are bragging about their payment. They just, I mean, the, the, the mentality has just changed. Like they don't. Yeah. The, people, is, they, they have high payments and they like, they don't stretch care. Stretching out over like 10 year care. periods. I'm like, yeah. who wants to pay on a car over 10 years? Well, and, and this next generation, you know, like, like my kids, for example, my kids, you know, when I was growing up, I needed new shoes. I'm with Oakley sunglasses. I want the Ray-Bans or whatever. I wanted the Nikes. I wanted the jeans, $100 jeans. I wanted all that kind of stuff, right? And uh, I was dumb at 15 and 16. I agree. But um, these kids, like, they, if you give them a computer or a Xbox and a TV and a place to sit, they're fine. They don't need a big house. They actually would rather like small houses. They don't have the same compulsion to have materialistic things. And they seem like they want to just have their phones. They want the latest phone. They want uh, the apps, and they want the coolest car. And just it's just a different mindset. It's really interesting to watch. Um, it's just gonna, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, let's see. Um, all right, I'm gonna move on. Let's talk about the ridge line. The, the thing with the ridge line that nobody well nobody watched. <laughs> <laughs> to be frank with you, because nobody really cares about the ridge line. I mean that in the nicest possible way. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it seems like the ridge line. That's yeah, that's his hat. That's uh, this is his hat. He won. That's his hat. I'm sending it to you. I just I was gone all day today, and I'm sending it on your way as soon as I get in tomorrow. I, I'm He's like, hands off my hat, dude. No, but, yeah, I mean, it's I, I'm <laughs> very frustrated you won that hat because I'm gonna have to hopefully at the Toyota event they have some more because I'm gonna have to grab four or five more of those things. That's a badass looking hat. Um, so yeah, that's that it's coming your way. I, I you've emailed me, I have it all written down. I'm gonna take care of it. Um, let's see. The uh <laughs> ridge line, back to the ridge line. Forget the trinkets, give out signed pitches of the staff. Yeah. No, nobody wants that. Uh, yeah, no, nobody, nobody wants that. No, no, no. So uh get back to the ridge line. The ridge line has more off-roadiness and the HPD is a package. Oh, I'm hold on. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna totally Trail sport? I'm totally going to throw, I'm totally going to grab the website and look at this Wait, because. Trail sport? Yes, trail sport. Oh my God, dude. Uh, thank you, Jill. That's why Jill's around. So I didn't even write the story and I know trail sport. Well, uh, yes, I appreciate that. But so yes, it has a new trail sport, which has more off-roadiness capability. And uh, yeah, the trail sport is, I think there's a photo of it. Yeah. The sky blue metallic, if it loads, uh, the sky blue metallic. And there's some stuff in the back. But uh, interesting enough, the interior is so Honda. Um, it, they have big, bigger Honda. center console. His and her wireless chargers. Okay. And then the bigger screen. And a, they call this a digital screen behind here, which I, I got to get Jill's viewpoint in this. Hold on. Let me find the photos. It's a fake so digital the screen. What? It's a fake digital screen. Yeah, look at that. Like, it's doesn't that look like analog gauges too with a little well, TFT? So I feel like the right side is an analog gauge, and then they have like the left side is digital. That's fake. It's yeah. Fake. It really, yeah. I was like, I was trying to talk about it in the camera, and I was like, wait, what? That doesn't, that doesn't look, oh. doesn't look, no. And then, so that's the interior, but this is the, um, the trail sport, Honda Ridgeline trail sport going through the water. Four to 24 inches, I think it said. Yes, something like that. And then, yeah, there you go. There's uh, the more aggressive front end. Hmm. Okay. I'm like, okay. And then ridge line stamped in the bed. That's cool. I, I kind of like that. So, so yeah. I do want to say um, the um, a 2007 Honda Ridge Line um, mm -hmm. competed in Rebel with me mm -hmm. and okay. uh, did really well. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah. No so, uh, trail sport packaging or anything, just 2007 old school. And they actually race the Honda Ridge Line. It actually races in the Baja series and stuff like that. They have a racing team. I've reached out to the guy once or twice and just never worked out to do an interview. Um, it, it's it's fairly capable. I mean, it just it just doesn't get the love. And it's interesting because they sell about twelve thousand units last quarter, and they sell uh, they sell about forty fifty thousand units a year, which is pretty decent, pretty good volume. It beats the uh, current Ford Ranger. And it beats the GMC Canyon, and it tops the Nissan Frontier at the moment. And yeah. so, I mean, it's actually the Honda Ridge Line is currently in third place. It goes Toyota Tacoma and a landslide, Chevy Colorado and Honda Ridge Line. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's really interesting that how that the uh, Ridge Line keeps going. Uh, let's see. 
the speedo gp yeah speedo yeah so finally got a wow cool all the day that took me like two years to get a wow cool out of the day but I'm <laughs> <sure>. <laughs> uh what happens you're going through a tunnel please have a speed trap at, at the end they have no idea <laughs> oh what engine is in the old truck it's a 350 v8 with upgraded crankshaft puts out 375 horsepower actually they call it i, I print out the sheet of paper to say on the screen what it was because no people are going to hammer me about it um, it is a three, they call it 375 engine. That's what they call it. Um, actually, uh, you know, what's interesting is, uh, I don't think there is a tunnel around me. <laughs> I just thought about it. So somebody, in Chicago, I got lots of tunnels. Right. So Todd asked Dave in Canada, how many tunnels do you have in the great white North? And I'm thinking to myself, like, how many tunnels are around here? I think I have one with a train track, but it's a very like short, it's like a blink with your eyes and you're gone tunnel. Do you have then, any that you like, drive through mountains? Drive through the center of the monument? You can. <laughs> they allow you to do it, but it speeds 25 miles an hour. Like, you're not going to do it. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, Todd says, ice may not go away, but the V8 rumble is. And I agree. I agree. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> yes, cards made simple. <laughs> no, you did not. You did We're not. We're getting yeah. to that, uh, Kelly. Um Kelly, God, I always get his name wrong. Eh, that's going to piss me off. Justin, um, I we'll get to that in a minute. I think we're getting to that. I was trying to, to give that off to Jill here in a minute um, so to have more stuff. All right, so Jill, all right, you were in Spain. Well, you weren't just in Spain. You were in Barcelona. Barcelona. Yes, Barcelona, Spain. So you were uh, you were down there. Down, down, not going to say down there. You were Over there. Well, yeah, what did you ever think about that? Is it lower than Chicago and else? Is it the it? I'm like, I know that the the, the I want to say the lo longitude latitude was like 44 degrees north. I don't, I don't know what we are in Chicago. Um, I, this is the sad fact. I actually brought my compass to um Barcelona and I declinated it. It has like a 1.98, you know positive declination i declinated it for barcelona and i carried it around with me i didn't use it because i was a little bit embarrassed but i did bring it with me um i don't i don't I, it might be a little bit lower than chicago yeah, interesting. um okay, but so yeah barcelona let me i'll throw the photos on the screen because if you're like me um i had to read the story because i had no idea what i was talking about and i was doing the video today and i was getting distracted by looking i made a couple mistakes in the video because i was like i was trying to figure out what the hell this thing is and like, what is this thing? And I just, I had to look at it and think about it a few times because I, I don't know. I just, it's, this one's a hard one for me, but you summed up pretty decent in, in your article. It's pretty decent. You summed pretty well, what I'm saying. Uh, the BFD, which by the way, I had to scroll to the bottom to figure out what the hell it was. I think really? I knew what it was. You don't know was what like, BFD is? Okay. I know, but I, I, it took I, I, me, I thought, I hold on, hold on, hold on. I was like, well, I think that's what she's saying. Is she really saying that? Because usually... If you want to say something like that, you actually text me and say, "Hey, can I say this?" And this time you're just like, I "Oh, didn't actually, use the word." I know. So I was like, "Well, all right, I guess game on." And then yeah, so uh, this anyway, way, is, is there anybody else who does not know what BFD is? Uh, you know, comment and also comment if you know what, D, what DFU means, <laughs> because that I took think me. That a was a Jonathan made up. My husband, I think, made that up. Yeah. Right. So you have you have some really interesting viewpoint on this thing um and I, I i guess so here's so let me shut up for a minute so what is this and what is that got your attention yeah so um this is a compact uh electric vehicle suv that has 275 miles hi my husband just peeked his head in <laughs> just because you have a dfu problem doesn't mean i do <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he heard the DFU comment. And yeah, I'm, like, I I'm sure he does. That up, um, but no. So it's 275 miles of range, and uh, it's compact. So let's be clear: like somebody who is six nine, I have a TikTok video of it, can sit in the seat and drive it, but nobody's gonna fit behind him. I mean, somebody's gonna fit behind me because I'm five feet tall, but nobody's gonna fit behind somebody who is really, really tall or even average size. I'll be honest. It's a compact SUV, but there's really good storage spaces. And 
like in the cabin, it's kind of like clever storage spaces. And then, um, you know, the rear storage area is also pretty clever with um, like a drop load floor or you can move it up and then hide stuff underneath. And I, I, I think they've done a really good job with it. So um, I'm like, I think I said range, 275 miles of range with the single motor, 265 miles of range with the um, dual motor, all wheel drive. This is real wheel drive um, if you opt for, uh, you know, the single motor, but because of the battery placement, it's not real wheel drive like you would normally experience it because it doesn't have a front engine. Um, what else? What else do you want to know about it? I liked well, it. I liked it a yeah. lot. There you go. I, I, I have you, good job summarizing that. I, I got to tell you, I had two thoughts. First of all, when I quit making mistakes and the video goes live, um, there's a couple things. First of all, she, being Jill, pointed out that the golf clubs could fit in the rear hatch area <laughs> with the driver. With the driver. Because there's bump outs. Which, honestly, I was so proud of you that you said, you didn't You didn't think, you, most people would say, oh, golf clubs fit in here, you walk away. But you pointed out the fact that there's a bump out for the golf driver, which is the tallest club in the, in the bag, to get fit in there. And I thought it was really impressive. Because my husband comments on that stuff. So, right. Yes. But I mean, I just was like, you know what? That, yeah, makes a lot of sense. The other thing that I was going to comment about this, and I think it's very controversial um, that we need to spend more time with, is pedometer. Yeah. You, you know That's... what? You should bring up the, the photo of the. Um... Okay. Yeah. So, hold, hold, let me get it. Let me get, let me get this prepped up for you for a second, because I think this is a very controversial thing. And those I, like, of you who are watching the live stream will have to tell us if it's controversial or not. Because I was like, holy here's the cow. interesting thing. Pretty much along age lines. Um, is that what you're finding? Age lines of the issue? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is a probably pretty good photo of it, yeah. right? So talk to us about your experience with speedometer and how you... And again, when I get the video done and stop making mistakes, we'll put this up. But... Um, there's no gauge cluster. So the thing behind the steering wheel is a camera to monitor your eyes. And what happens is like, so the top of the screen, the center screen on the center stack area where you see the, the park and you see the little image of the, the vehicle, um, that right there is the, um, that's your speedometer. So where the P is, that will show your speed while you're driving. And so, it's a little bit weird, but I will say if anybody, and I see a lot of people mentioning Tesla in there, and I'm going to say, I, I didn't even, I've never driven a Tesla, so that's not even a, a, a thought in my head. If you've ever driven a Mini Cooper, Mini puts their Speedo in the center. And so to me, I'm thinking Mini Cooper, not Tesla. And so people who've driven a Mini before will probably like, they're used to it. They know it. You know, it, it's not it's not a big deal. But for somebody who's used to looking behind the steering wheel, that's a little bit of muscle memory and a little bit of a learning curve that you're going to have to go through to be able to um, get that in your head. And, 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 and a day and a half of driving for me was not enough time. But it didn't bother me like some of the people on the program. There were a lot of people who had huge, huge problems with it. And, and it seemed to me like the older people got, the less they liked it. And the younger they were, the less problems they had with it. Yeah, but also you pointed out too that the, the radar behind the steering wheel monitors your eyes. So if you do spend a lot of time looking over at your speed, it'll alert you to say, look back at the steering wheel. So like, yeah, one of the, so we, the video that we're, we're going to post when, when Tim, you know, gets his stuff together, is it, it, it's five good things, five bad things. And, you know, for me, it's more of a TBD uh, about how I feel about this screen. I, I need more time with it. Um, but there are a lot of operations that you have to do through the screen. So if you want to adjust your side mirrors, you have to go through that screen. If you, um, you, you do have a wand to turn your lights on and off, but like I could never figure out how to do it. So I was going through the screen to turn my headlights on and off and, you know, to deal with auto headlights. Um, the, 
volume is through the screen, the changing the stations through the screen. And, and so there's just a lot of operations you do through the screen. And I found when I was like adjusting my side mirrors, because I don't know about you, but I don't adjust when I'm sitting stationary. I adjust when I'm driving on the highway. So I'm trying to adjust my mirrors and the camera is like watching my eyes. It was like, pay attention to the road. I'm like, I'm trying to pay attention to the road, but I have to adjust my side mirrors. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just, uh, it was, it was, it was interesting. And so I, I do, so as someone younger, uh, you just like the central display, but haven't spent time with one for, uh, okay. So I, I don't know. It was a lot of people commented in social media that, um, they wish they had done what the Maki did where they give you this big central display but then they put like a separate little digital screen that's essentially the size of the camera behind the the driver screen to give you your speedo i don't know like a head-up display but all of that yeah. adds cost so i i understand what they've done here they're they're doing the whole minimal thing you know they're they're kind of trying to you know, declutter and and they've done a great job of it um and they're also trying to decontent to de-expense. Does that make sense? Because the other big thing that's a big deal about this is the base price is $36,000 with destination. It's like $36,245, I think, with destination. That is a huge deal because you still get that center screen. You get, you know, the Google operating system. You get a heat pump. You get a heat pump. Um, you get a lot of stuff included in that price. And I think that's huge. But if you want to go all in and go with the top tier premium trim with uh, every option you can get, and by the way, there really aren't many options that you can get. I think the climate package is one and it's $500. Um, it's still going to be under $50,000. And I, I think for an electric vehicle that's on the premium side of things, I think that's, I think that's huge. I think it's a really right. Yeah. And, and keep in mind that EVs and also gas vehicles, ICE vehicles today, a lot of costs are from mandatory safety equipment. Like there's built-in costs, like backup cameras, mandatory, airbags, mandatory, uh, analog brakes, mandatory. So when you start adding mandatory stuff into it, then you add in mandatory engine or mandatory battery costs. I mean, and then you add the inflation and the manufacturing going on. You have some expensive vehicles right now. You just do. It's just it's just the byproduct of all this uh, legislation that's passed through. Consumers want more features. They've rolled into one thing, and boom, there you are today in what's in today's environment. And so, I don't know, it's, it is interesting to, to think about that stuff as far as cost. I'm glad you brought that up because I was really, like, even though I made, <laughs> I, I, I'll get the video done. Um, I, I was very interested in how your viewpoint was on that kind of stuff because you were, I think you nailed it. Um, Dick Header says, good morning from Asia. And I pointed this out because I don't think we've had anybody from Asia before on a live stream. So thanks, Dick, for morning. popping in. Hopefully you enjoy your morning Thank coffee. Thank you for, for starting your day with us. Yeah, I've never heard that one before. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Uh, for, so, all right, hold on, Dave. Dave McKenna says, for aging drivers, all this confusing, useless crap is distracting and of zero benefit. I would completely disagree. My father, all the way he drives in his 70s, I told him to sell all his old cars and go buy a brand new car because he is a danger on the road and new vehicles, a lane departure and adaptive cruise and automatic emergency braking. Oh, automatic reverse, reverse braking? Automatic reverse braking. We would save kids' lives with elderly having automatic reverse braking. They would not roll over kids. Or, be, or you know, just save or their car people. backing yeah. into another vehicle or, you oh, know, the rear goodness. cross traffic alert. Like, especially in a place like Chicago and you have two big vehicles, by, you know, beside you and you're trying to back out and people zoom through parking lots and they... And it breaks for you and gives you an alert and yeah. Blind spot monitoring, uh, you know, and 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 alerting you when somebody's coming down your blind spot. I mean, th there are some benefits to that stuff that I would I would disagree with you there, Dave. I I people are talking me all the time like, why don't you go buy your kid a beater car as your first car? I'm like, oh hell no. They're like, why not? I'm like, because it's gonna hurt him a lot. And they're like, it doesn't hurt when you need accidents. It just hurts the car. I'm like, no no, all that force from the accident goes through your body, and it would hurt him. He could end up dead. In an accident with an older car. So uh, I'm going to play devil's advocate. And I think what to, um, what Dave is trying to say is like not having knobs is distracting for older oh, drivers. Yes. Okay. And yeah. like putting the single mono screen in there is distract distracting for older drivers. And so some like 
having to adjust your side mirrors through the center screen is distracting for older drivers. And so what I find really interesting about that. Volvo EX30 is um, Volvo has said that they're essentially targeting, you know, either dinks, dual income, no kids, or young single people um, who don't have kids or not married, don't have a family or empty nesters. So they're, they're targeting young, but they're also thinking people who are, um, you're welcome, Dave, um, people who are um, older and no longer have kids would come into this as well. And so um, I, I find that target a little bit interesting because, you know, those were some of the people that I heard that were very angry about, you know, that center screen. And, you know, my, my drive partner um, has a, a son, a 14 year old son, and she, she didn't, she didn't like that. And she, she thought it was pretty distracting. Um, and, and she's not that much older than I am, but I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm like TBD because I think, you know, a day, you know, like I, I probably drove it for four hours total, you know, because you have a drive partner and you switch and, you know, we had two days, but I, I wasn't in the driver's seat for eight hours, both days. So I, I feel like you really, need to like, there's a learning curve, there's going right. to be a learning curve. And I just really need to spend time with it. And so I I was somewhat distracted and trying to get not to mention the fact that I was driving in a foreign country with signs and languages that you really have to pay attention to be able to read. Um, and, and you're in like, you know, an area where like the stop signs look different and the, you know, do not enter and trying to figure out what the red car and the black car next to each other meant <laughs> like trying to figure all that stuff out. Like the signs, I'm like, this yeah, sign you were, yeah, sense yeah. To me. Um, which apparently means don't pass by the way. So i um, trying to figure out all of that while trying to figure out the car. It just like, I can't wait to get it as a test car in the United States for a couple of reasons. First off, I can't wait to drive it in the winter because I 270 miles, 75 miles of range. I want to see how that does in cold weather. Um, and, and, and they have said that if you've programmed in the charging station while you, to the native navigation, while you are driving, it will precondition the vehicle so that by the time you get to the charging station, you will be able to get like all of the benefit of having a, you know, preconditioned battery. So you can, it can accept like it, it, it I want to say it's 153 kilowatts is the, um, the power. So it's not like ultra, ultra, ultra fast, like the Kia and Hyundai, but it'll go from 10% to 80% in 26.5, um, 26.5 minutes. Um, but, you know, I mean, to me, and 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 I want to point out too that, uh, and I'm like, blah, 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 I have a lot to say, um, go figure. But uh, the, the Volvo has created a partnership with Starbucks, where Starbucks is going to start putting um, charging stations in. And to me, that is brilliant. And they sh somebody should have done this like 10 years ago, um, Tesla. Uh, but they, you know, because how are you going to spend 20 minutes of your time? Like you're going to go into Starbucks. You're going to get a coffee. That takes 20 minutes. Um, you're going to visit the bathroom. Maybe you'll drink the coffee. Maybe you'll have a snack. But like that is just the perfect arrangement. And, um, you know, just as long as you don't have people who go in and I'm going to work on my computer for three hours and leave the car plugged in, even though it's no longer charging. Don't do that. Um, but at any rate, so I, I don't know. I just, I can't wait to have it tested in the United States, see how it fits in Chicago. It'll definitely fit in my garage. Um, can't wait to drive it down to Indianapolis and um, take it to my parents' house and hopefully cold weather and um, see if I can get used to that speedometer. Cause it has a lot of cool technology, you know, I, I think it, it, it has a lot of good stuff on it. Yeah. I You'd think for a company that I know it's owned by a Chinese company now, but a company that's based in Sweden, they would figure out the wintertime charging of an EV. We'll see. Um, you know, I mean, they certainly have figured out an accurate range counter. You know, I feel like when I've driven other EVs, even when it's not cold, it'll say, oh, you have 250 miles of range. And then you start driving. They're like, you have 100 miles of range. And I'm like, wait a minute. I did not go 150 miles. Right. So, um, you know, and, and I've driven like Polestar and I've driven um, like the, the C40 recharge and the XC40 recharge. And I feel like in temperate conditions, their range estimator is 
pretty spot on. So I'll be very curious with cold weather how that does. Yeah, you actually know a lot more about Volvo than I know. I only know about Volvo's with the edit videos I edit for you. Uh, <laughs> you've driven the hell out of the Volvo. Hi, um, you know what? I, I do like Volvo, so. They can't spell Nebraska. I don't get them at all. Uh, I want to end on yeah. this note because it kind of. Right. It's one of those things. Can you uh, say Nebraska? Who's having Nebraska coffee. Hybrid? What's it? Nebraska hybrid. Right. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Dick, Dick is in Asia having coffee, and I feel like it's. If he's the first time I have somebody at live stream from Asia, I got it. Hunter's question here. And he wants to know, are purely ice cars going away soon? It depends. I think in the consume. So I want to say this. So in the car lineup. Yeah. I think it's all going to be some sort of hybrid situation. SUV lineup. Majority will be a hybrid. I'm not sure that Tahoe hybrid works out a time period. I'm not sure. It's super suburban hybrid works out time period. Half ton trucks, I think, will be split. Heavy duties will always be. Um, I think heavy duties going to be the bastion for those people that do not want all this technology to go to a three quarter ton and one ton because the heavy duties do not fall under the EPA CAFE guidelines. E actually, EPA and NHTSA guidelines go better than CAFE guidelines. Um, and so they have less of the newer te engine technology in them. They're much simpler builds. And so I think you see that quite a bit. I don't think that ICE trucks will go away soon. But as much as the politicians think they're going to go away soon, because of as Jill pointed out earlier in this live stream, there are some uh, compromises you make when you do a truck thing with a with an EV. Um, but I think that the, the writing's on the wall a little bit here, and and I don't think that I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that a straight V8 goes away. I think I think actually I think if you went back in time and said, hey, let's look, let's go back five or seven years, I think that was probably the last time you saw a straight V8. I think now uh, they all have center deactivation. They all have direct injection. They yeah. all have start-stop technologies. They all have that. So I think I think the people that, that want to say, are purely ICE cars gone, that's already done. That ship actually sailed a while ago. If you if you, if you you decide to say what your definition of ICE car is, right? So if, if your ICE vehicle is like my 62 with a 350 V8 in it and an automatic transmission, that's the only thing in it, and there's electric fuel injection, that's it. Then yeah, that ship has sailed years ago. What we're dealing with now is different iterations of different vehicles, and automakers like Ram are playing a game trying to figure out what consumers want versus what they can build and what makes sense. And so the game we're playing now is what where's the engineering going to be, what's customer demand going to be, and what where's it going to turn out. And and correct me if I'm wrong, Jill, but it seems to me that. The days of just a natural aspirated V8 with no turbos, no direct injection, no sudden deactivation, are, it's been gone for a while. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, one or two. Uh, sorry, my husband's asking me about dinner. <laughs> one or two. Yes, you need to go to dinner. I haven't had dinner yet either. <laughs> so I want to eat some dinner. You want to eat some dinner. I think it's a good time to end the video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've got 45 minutes, apparently. Maybe maybe we order out. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sorry. I forgot you're Chicago. Ordering out for me is like taking my gun and going outside. No, <laughs> it's a different scenario. No, we could do we can do like delivery, takeaway, walk to dinner, and it would be faster than that. Um, we're, we're, in theory, doing shredded chicken this evening. I may not even be hungry in 45 minutes. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I need a snack, though. But that, anyways, uh, yeah. that's what we're going on for tonight. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for 100,000 subscribers. Thank it you. doesn't mean that we make more money. It doesn't mean anything about money, but it is kind of a cool thing. And I don't know about Jill, but I've been, I once I log into YouTube and the number says 100,000 on there. And I'm just like, it just, it takes me a minute. It's still, it's still, it's been, it's been a week. So it takes me a minute to look at that number going, wait, well, that's like another digit. And you issued a really interesting stat about the number of um, YouTubers who actually passed that goal. Yeah. I, so I, I, I I have a lot of family and friends who do not understand what I'm doing. And so I wanted to look for a stat. And there was a, there was a study done a couple years ago. Maybe it was a year ago, whatever. It said 94% of YouTube channels do not have 10,000 subscribers and like or something like that. 84% don't have 1,000. Maybe back the other way around. 94% don't have 1,000. 10, 84% don't have 10,000. So if you look at those numbers and look at what actually the number of channels that have 100,000, you're looking at single digits. And then if you look at channels that have more of a million and, and, and like your friends at TFL, they have a big channel. Um, that's even low, low single digits. 
And so, and, and I mean, again, it's there's thousands and thousands, or maybe even millions of YouTube channels now. So the numbers are statistically pretty interesting. But yeah, I found I found that number out there, and I just I want to put that out there with the to give people perspective because. 100,000 subscribers to YouTube doesn't sound very much. It's just you don't understand it until you actually look at the statistics and go, wow. And the majority of people, the majority of YouTube channels fail. Yeah. They do. And so it's just, it's just, it's one of those things. It's just, yeah, it's pretty, the numbers are pretty incredible. And the, to have the views we have and have the, the audience we have, I'm just so thankful for it. So again, I appreciate that. And uh, yes, I'll be sending the hat out. <laughs> one of my favorite hats. So it's still my hat. No, anyways, I have more hats to give out because th th this thing, that rack, I have two more racks like it. So yes, <laughs> I need I need to de declutter a little bit. So yeah, and anyways, you're gonna go to dinner. I'm going to dinner because I'm okay. uh, obviously running out of steam here. So as always, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching the website, checking things out over there, and the YouTube channel too. I really do appreciate everything. I know Jill appreciates stuff. Visit the website, read posts, watch videos on YouTube. That, yeah, yeah, that kind of deal too. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching. We will see you down the road.